It is not the will of God for you to wait because now you become a prisoner of your master. You become dependent upon Potiphar. You become a slave to somebody else because you can't do nothing until they pay you to do it. So you're in captivity. You're not free. You get free on Sunday at 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock. You're free. You feel good, but you ain't good. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. I'll let it just sit. It'll sit all week. That's the one thing. See, preachers are supposed to teach you how to live. We're supposed to shout you happy. You want to say, do you think for one minute that Jesus Christ wants you to be a slave to somebody else? We're only slaves to Christ. Only slaves to Christ. So what that whole story was, was for us not to be complacent when you have a good job. Some of you all that are sitting here, you're making a hundred, you're making two hundred, you're making three hundred thousand dollars. This is not the time to get comfortable and complacent. This is the time for you to use your head. Where can I invest for my tomorrow? If you're gonna live in your tomorrow, make it a tomorrow that you plan for. Because when you don't do that, you get envious of how other people are living. And, what other, and where other people live and what they have and now all of a sudden you become ashamed of what you have yeah. and ashamed for where you are in life you don't have to live like that if you got the right mental attitude and so some of y'all sitting here right now I know y'all, I know y'all I, I used to be right there thinking the same thing I ain't coming for all that I ain't coming for all that and he should be, and he should be saying that in church if I don't say it, who's going to say it? If I don't say it, who's going to say it? You got to wait for the treasure to have movie stars come in to tell you what I'm giving you for free. No. It's our job if we want to see. If I was preaching heaven, this place would be rocking and rolling. And I'm preaching how to get there, but I'm also preaching what you're going to do before you get there. What you're going to do before you arrive. you got to live this life out. It's your life. You do what you want to do with it. I'm just trying to uh, help you live the best life that you can. And it comes through your, how, what do you do with your money? In the Bible, it called, that's called stewardship. What do you do with what God gave you? He gives you a secret. He gives you 100%. Whatever it happens to be, it's 100%. And if you, you should be thinking, I'm going to give God a portion. I'm going to save a portion for myself. And then with my 80% that's left, I can use in other areas. Amen. I can buy more things if I want to. I can help more people if I want to. But two things you've got to do. You gotta give 10 to God and 10 to yourself. Pay yourself before you pay your bills. You gotta do that. Then after time goes on, you will have accumulated some substance, something you can work up on. Like the down payment on your house. Like that apartment building you wanted to buy. Why go out? And see, when you study the Bible, when you study the Bible, you will see in the book of Genesis in the very beginning when Adam and Eve sinned and Adam messed up, blamed his wife for all the stuff that was going on in, in life. And God got mad and he said, you're going to work this day to the sweat of your brow. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm here to tell you that you don't, Jesus came. You don't have, you got to work, but not to the sweat of your brow. There ain't nothing better than sleepy money. Write that down. Y'all ain't write down. Take no notes. Can't take no notes. Sleepy money. What is that? That's money you make while you sleep. Money you make while you sleep. All you need to know is get the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God to show you how to do it. 
Ain't nothing better than sleeping money. When you own 16 apartments, you sleep and you still get rent. Y'all can hate on me, but I'm going to lunch after this. He says in Genesis 40, uh, 41, 47, during the seven years of abundance, the land produces plentiful. Joseph collected to 20% of food produced in the seven years of abundance. So what happened is that when the, oh, 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 y'all catch the Bible. No, you didn't put your Bible, you didn't turn your Bibles, you didn't turn the phones off, you got to open it back up. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but I need to do, I, I just need to show you this. Genesis, chapter 41, verse number 47. Somewhere in 47, 48, 49, somewhere down there. Say amen when you got it. Amen. I don't know what version this is. During the seven years of abundance, the land produced plentiful. Joseph collected the 20% of food produced in those seven years of abundance in Egypt and stored it in the cities. Blah, blah, blah. Joseph stored up huge quantities of grain. Y'all see that? Yeah. Like the sand of the sea. You all see that? Yeah. It was so much that he stopped keeping records yeah. because it was beyond measure. Yeah. You all see that? Yeah. See something like that? Yeah. Here's what that means. It means that he had so much accumulated from the 20% Come on. while everything was in the abundance. He was rolling so good. The country was, was just... Uh, very productive. The economy was good. He had 20%. He stored it up in the silo. It says he had saved so much that he stopped counting. Amen. He had saved up so much, he stopped counting. And for 20 of you all that are in this room right now, I declare the blessings of God on your life that you're going to have to stop counting. And I don't know if you're joking. Non-believers, you just sit there because I ain't talking to you. But there's a few people in here. And I'm telling you, your silo is going to be so abundant that you're going to have to stop counting. Yeah. Yeah. You know what that means. And I can tell you that what it really means. In today's term, this is 2024. So we don't have silos. We don't have y'all. You all don't have no corn and all that stuff. It's time to go anyway. Y'all don't have all that. What it means is this. You don't have to balance your checkbook. You ain't got to run back at the end of the week to see how much you got. Stop counting. Somebody say, I already know. There's plenty in there. Come on, somebody say, I already know. I already know. But I got money in the bank. I got money in the bank. If, I house, if I need a new house, I buy a new house. I buy a new house. If I need a second house, I buy a second house. I, a second house. I, a second house. I already know. I already know. I already know. So he's the right attitude, the right attitude, the right attitude. He was saving, and he prospered so much for the Pharaoh. He prospered so much. The Bible says they had more than enough, and Joseph depended on the wisdom of God, the faithfulness of God, the stewardship. They prospered so much that they saved the economy. So what he grew out of that 20% of savings, it was more than enough that he was able to see this I gotta break it down. I gotta break it down. He had so much that he saved the nation. He fed the nation. But he had so much left over, and because he had a righteous mind, he says, I know that other people are gonna need food that are not of this country. So in his silo, he set up an Aldi's. He says, I know y'all are going to need to eat. Now, he's not talking to the people of Egypt. He's talking to the people that are on the edges of Egypt from the foreign countries. Because how many people know when the famine hits, it don't just hit you. It hit everybody that was in the region. And other countries here had to line up 
Yeah, see, y'all gotta have a keen eye. You got that right out here. Other people here that lined up to come into my oldies. So you should be thinking, what is it that you gotta have a creative mind? What is it that I can produce that other people have to line up to get it? That's why people that do what their passion is, they don't always become very successful. They love what they're doing, but they ain't making no money. You want the wisdom of God. How can I help other people? And God will raise you, give you ideas and wisdom. Amen. To be able to bless other people. Now, I ain't saying he hiked the price up like these, these people out here today. But he was able to feed nations because of one thought that God had given him about having the right mind for prosperity. And y'all think this ain't spiritual. How many people think this is spiritual? Amen. Amen. So everybody came so that they can buy grain from Joseph and Pharaoh. They can buy grain. But that's not where the story ends. Because it's not about the grain. It's not about the corn. It's spiritual prosperity. The things that God can give you if you look at what the Bible says in Proverbs 3 and 9, honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crop, then your barns will be filled to overflowing, or your vats will brim over with new wine. Honor the Lord with your suffering. That's a mental process. That's a mental thought. I want to bless God with what I have. And my God will supply all my needs according to the riches of his glory. According to his riches of his glory. That's talking about true prosperity. Amen. True prosperity. Can you, do you have the mindset to give God back what belongs to him? If it had not been for God, you wouldn't have what you have. But you got to keep that thing going. And, 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 I, and I'm really out of time. But I wanted to show you how... Uh, uh, Joseph always thought about being consistent. So whatever he thought, whatever he did, how faithful he was from the beginning to the end. If you're faithful with no money, if you're faithful with some money, if you're faithful with more than enough of things that what God has done for you, be consistent. Let it continue. Let it rise. It's going to pay off. Be consistent. God is more than faithful. And he'll bless your life abundantly. I look all the time when some people don't have money. Who's the first person we're going to cheat? Be honest. Come on, y'all ain't no damn solution. It ain't going to be, gonna be BP Amico. First person we're going to cheat is the church. It's going to be God. Because the term, the, the language is, I don't have enough to pay my time. And here's what's so interesting. If you were tied in $100 a week, and then you hit a bad spot in life, you say, I don't have enough to pay my tithe, so you don't pay $100, you don't pay nothing. That's crazy. Don't stop paying 100%. Give God 20%. Give, you know, give him $20, but don't keep the whole thing for yourself because what does it say will a man rob God at least God can say you ain't robbing me but you holding on to more than you're supposed to but you ain't robbing me hallelujah now I ain't forecasting no blessings on nobody's life I don't want to do that stuff God didn't tell me to do that I do what the Lord instructs us to do but how many people want a better life Real quickly, we didn't take up tithes and offering. This is your chance to give back. Right mental attitude. Do I hold what belongs to him? Or do I be obedient to the word of God? Do I hold it? Or do I have the same mindset? Or do I want to obey God? And for those of you that are disobeying God, just give them a chance. 
give him a chance to show himself faithful and be obedient to the word of God. So I'm going to ask the ushers, for those of you that are sitting here this morning, before we open up the doors of the church, before we open up the doors of the church, those of you that pay your tithes or offerings online, 